this as well. Yes. Okay, so this is just process data, what I'm going to talk about now, all right? So let's talk about overview what you need. A lot of people don't have this table. This table just shows your formulas, okay? So how did you calculate percentage mass? If you did cal calculate the change in mass, how did you do that? Standard deviation. You see, for standard deviation, they don't show the calculation. They just say, in Excel, we use that stat dev function, right? For standard error, they say it was used by dividing the standard deviation, so that's S, dividing by the square root of the sample size. Just give one example. Confidence interval, just say it was calculated in Excel using the confidence T function, okay? And then you just, you can put this, this is exactly what in the this Excel sheet that I'll show you, this is what I've put in as the formula, all right? That's an example of the values they've used, like standard deviation of 138 and sample size of five. And they got this value. Then again, there's no maths involved, it'll happen in Excel, okay? So this is the formula, then I'm gonna show you how to, you can do that on Excel, okay? You need to go through things like, you know, what the standard deviation means. For example, if you have a low standard deviation, that's good. That means your data points are closer to the mean. If you have a high standard deviation, you see the spread is a bit, is the, is a bit bigger. That means your data sets are all over the place. So if you have a high standard deviation, right, your, your data is not that accurate. But we don't discuss standard deviation so much. We are going to use standard error, okay? So we, we get the standard deviation and we use that to calculate standard error which was here. So standard error. We use the standard deviation to calculate standard. And that goes into our error bars. And I'll show you how to put them in the error bars. Okay. So let's go there. There's this Excel sheet that I'll, I'll send it to you. So you go there. I'll put all the formulas up there. Okay. So I've got something like this. Now this is just general for just general data. I, I use three values because that's the most common of what people have done, three trials, right? Some people have done seven trials. If you've done seven trials, you're gonna have to adjust this. If you've done less than two, no drama, you'll be fine. So let's just do it for three trials. Let's say you, let's, let's follow yours, Shalom. You did, you did three, how many trials? Two trials, okay. So, um, was it three temperatures? Did you use three different temperatures? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'll say, I'll call this temp zero. What was the second one? And? We had one, two, three, four, five. Right, let's just, um, let's focus on, oh, you got five temperatures. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Tell me the other one. Temp. Uh, zero, 20, 23. Yep. Uh, 80. Oh, give me one second. Now, because you see this Excel sheet now, I need to add, an, you did. You said five different temperatures, right? Yeah. So I need to add another one for five of them. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll move this one to the bottom so I can create some more space. Now, if I copy this, you see all the formulas actually copy with it. So I'll just copy this, I'll paste it here, and I'll call that temp, what is the next one, 80, 80. did you say? 80? Yeah, 80. And then there's another one that's, I'll just paste this again. Oh, I can't do it. I have to copy it again. So I'll paste this there, and you got 100. temp 100. Okay. Now, you said you only did two trials, right? Yeah. So we'll remove that last one. What was For temp 0, what was your... 8. Was it 8? Yeah. And? 3.2. 3 now, you see, when it, it basically calculates the standard error, standard deviation, all of those things are calculated for you. Yeah. They're just formulas that are put there. At temp 20, what is it? Uh, 1.6, 1.6. 1.6, you'll see that there's no error. Look at the standard error. I'll remove that value. You'll see it'll go to um, zero, should be zero. You see that? Because you basically, for both trials at that temperature of 20 degrees, you got 1.6. Yeah. Uh, 23, what'd you get? <coughs> And 4.8. Okay. Tell me at temp 80, what did you do? 24 and 0. Okay. We won't make error bars for that 0 because we said that it's an anomaly for you because yeah. it didn't happen, right? Then um, what is this temp 100? Uh, this was 6.4 and 0. 
Okay, same thing for this. We're not going to put error bars because we, you have said in your table, you've shaded it, and you've said that's an anomaly. Okay, so our error bars really will be for the first three temperatures. Now, um, that's standard. This is confidence interval, all right? And you see now, because you had two values, I need to change that n, because remember in the, in the one node, if you go look at the confidence, n is the sample size, right? So your sample size is actually two. So I need to change that number three there to a two, all right? Now I gotta do that for all of these. This one won't have anything because there will be nothing because your value, both your values are the same. I'll change that one to a two. I don't think that'll make a difference, does it? Just do it anyway. You see, for these last last ones, you've got such a huge confidence interval because there's such a big difference between the data because that, that trial was an anomaly. Okay? So, we want to put some error bars. So that's the graph that's being plotted on the side. But it's actually, to plot this graph, we've got to use these values here. So I'll remove these two. These ones here, we don't have that. Our temperatures were, um, could you tell me again? The first one was? Zero. Zero. Eight, 20, 25, was it? 23, and then 80 and 90, 80 and 100, right? 80 and 100, we'll do that. These are the average calculations. I've already got a formula there. Now, if you want to drag a formula to, a, to go more places, you just, at the very corner of that bar, you drag that down like that. It's saying there's nothing because I've not put numbers. Okay, now I just need to fix these numbers for um, 8, 3.2. So 8, 3.2. You see how the graph is changing? Notice the graph as well. Um, then this one was 1.6, 1.6. You see how it's gone down there? And there's no error bar. You can kind of see it there, but it's zero for the second one. Okay. For 23 degrees, we had 9.6. And 4.8, that's that, that's the third one. Now, if you notice, for the fourth one, if I put, um, my graph is not suited to have those five temperatures, so I'll have to adjust it. Now, that's 24 and zero. That's, well, actually, we can't, we can't, um, we said, because it's an anomaly, we're not going to use that value to process our data. So our mean, we'll leave it as 24. I won't put the zero there. Okay, um, this one was 6.4. Again, I won't put the zero for this because there was an anomaly mm -hmm. for the second trial. Now, um, what I need to do is now adjust this graph so I can have five of those temperatures. So to do that, I just select the data. So you could, um, I'll just right click it, select data. And then you want to edit. So that you want to go all the way. So oh, wait, sir. Yeah. I just realized um, we're investigating the production of oxygen. Could we use the gas jar and the beehive? So it's production of oxygen. That's fine. So you just need to, you just have to change the the names here. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then um, the temperatures go down there. So you need this temperature. Um, so, so that is instead of going till there, I'm going to drag it down all the way to accommodate all of those. And now it looks fantastic. So in, in your description is going to change. So instead of if average height of froth, yep. yours would be average number of bubbles. Yep. Right. Yep. I'll change that here right now. Number of bubbles. Of froth. Now what did you say? Average. Um, Volume, oxygen, oxygen. volume of oxygen. Yes. In mils, right? Mm -hmm. At the different temperatures, you can just adjust those temperatures. I won't go through all of them, but you just play around with that. And then in the, of course, the uh, Y axis, you need to change that to, again, volume. Okay, temperature is fine, that stays there. 
Now, these error bars have automatically been added. That's because I've done that in the formulas. Now, if we look at this, if I wanted to, let me just show you how I did the error bars, right? So if I, okay, you see these last two don't have error bars, but we said we're not gonna put those. So if I double click the, these error bars, So once you once you go, go there, you double click those error bars, or you could even just right click them. You right click and you hit format error bars, and this thing on the right is going to show. Up. Then you go at the bottom custom, you press specify value. Now it asks you to specify the values. Now just the three I've taken, because that was initially I just had three data. If let's say you did want to use the standard error for the the last two temperatures, all you do is add them in there. So you press. Um, control so you can select all four so that's positive error value positive error value just basically means um, positive error value means um, I'll go down there one second Here, if you look at this for example positive error is that value from let's say just that top part there negative error would be that part there but it's normally the same size, so it's the same actual value. So if I go back to Excel, so this negative error should be the same as that other one. So I'd come and I'd select all of them. I'd select the first one, second one, that third one for the third graph, fourth one, and the fifth one for the last one. Hit OK, and I get error bars everywhere. But we don't want those last two, because you had an anomaly. Yeah. We want to get rid of it. So I go again, specify value, and I don't want those last ones, so I just take one. Oh, let me delete this stuff. I'll select again, I want one, two, three. So you can compare those three error bars. Negative error, I'll do the same thing. I'll just take the three instead. So one, two, three, click OK. So I just got these two error bars you can now talk about. Now, when you're discussing these error bars, have a look here. All right, you can write on this. Um, all right, have a look here, Shannon. You see these error bars here? They, they are within the same range. You see they overlap? That's an overlap with that, yes. isn't it? Yeah. So that means that there's actually, if you're comparing zero degrees and 23 degrees, right? There is no significant difference between that data range. They're all, they're all within the same range. So there's no difference between these, these two temperatures. Mm -hmm. So that means that your test was actually not very accurate on how you conducted it. Now again, it doesn't mean you get less marks. Just how you explain this thing is important. So where that happens is, let's go to the one node. I'll show you an example here. So for example, this one, all right? Let me use the top example first. Okay, this one here. So. Error bars overlapping. So between at this part here, this until here, all of these values, they are overlapping, right? And over there, between like let's say that and that, there's no overlap. They are in different ranges, right? There is absolutely no overlap. And that's the kind of stuff you need to discuss. Now, you need to also say the error bars are represented by standard error. You see what's in green there? So when you explain your graph, make sure you say in your graph, the error bars are actually standard error. Now, the interpretation just goes into the trends and patterns of what's going on, you know? So, let's read it. Suggest that the uh, algal population growth should fast through four stages, whatever. This data fits the model for both treatments, suggesting both samples grew in the expected pattern growing upwards. So that's a trend, right? The gray water shows an increased exponential growth compared to the control. So, the, yeah, the gray water exponential increase compared to the control. You see how they're just identifying trends and patterns. The stationary growth rate occurred at a higher final mean biomass in the gray water data, suggests that the gray water treatment has a positive effect on algal growth. So for the, um, it's basically saying for the gray water, the mean algal biomass, right, was higher than the control, obviously. So they've an they're analyzing those patterns and trends. And notice how they use values, you know. Make sure you talk about, add some data in there. Now, let's look at the analysis. The standard error now. Analysis is about uncertainty. 
The standard error of the data sh um, shown suggests that the data collected for control treatment has a higher level of precision than that of gray water treatment. Error bars are overlapping between, so when standard error is low, that first part I just spoke about there, right, is that the standard error um, for the control has a, so the control has a higher level of precision. So if we look at the standard error, so if you look at the way they've calculated in the table, standard error for the control, basically that over there, if you look at all these values for the, the green one, right, can you see they're all much smaller than the one in pink there? Like that 0 0.9, for example, compared to that 0 0.2, right? That 0 0.02 is smaller than 0 0.09. That means that the control, right, was more accurate. Lower standard error, more accuracy. Okay, so that's what it's saying over... And that first part. The standard error suggests the data collected for the control has a higher level of precision. Why? Because it had that smaller uh, standard error overall. Now, error bars are overlapping between 24 and 72 hours. So between 24 and 70 some odd hours, it's, they're overlapping until there. All those overlaps there. Now, let's see what it says for that. Suggesting that the results fall within the same range for both conditions at these times. Consequently, as the error bars are not overlapping, that's over here, no overlap after this, there's no overlap there, right? Yeah. As the error bars are not overlapping, this suggests that the results for each treatment do not fall within the same range. This may suggest there was no positive effect of grey water treatment until after 92 hours. So there was actually no significant change statistically until, until there, then after that, that's when the results strongly suggest there's a difference. For every graph, you need to do these kind of things. Now, if we look at, yeah. thanks. The laptop from the table. Thank you. Do you want to send that to the email? I will. Or one email. Thank you. Welcome. So, um, this table. Let's have a look at this table. There's an interpretation here. Again, larger. They talk about standard error as well. So make sure under your table you have an interpretation, and you just talk about the standard error. The same way I was talking about it before. Here, they've used percentage change. For this graph, they've used these values here, the ones in blue at the top there, the percentage change. You see? So they've used another graph where they're actually using percentage change, right? And then they've used a confidence interval for uncertainty. And then, again, it's the same overlapping stuff. Interpretation, the gray water treatment shows a 67.5 increase in percentage biomass. So between that and that, there's a six, 675 percent increase. Yeah. Okay, you literally see it in that y-axis. Okay, suggesting that the treatment has a positive effect on growth. Analysis. Data indicates with 95 percent confidence, that's for that confidence interval, the sample mean falls within the range of that plus or minus 171. So that's what was calculated. Confidence interval, that's, you know how in the standard, in the error bars, yeah. I put those values. So this is 171 positive, that's negative 171. And then for this other one, it's 285, plus or minus 285. So for this one, the positive error bar is 285, negative error bar is 285. And you can do that on Excel, the same way I showed you. As there is no overlap in the error bars for the confidence intervals, it indicates that there is a statistically diff there's a statistical difference between the two means. Therefore, this suggests with confidence that the gray water treatment has a significant positive effect. So the data was accurate. Yeah. Um, student t -test. let me show you that really quickly again watch these videos are really useful All right. there's also a link I've put here if you click on that link it should take you to a, an um, article that discuss uncertainty really well I'll just wait for it to load, I'll show you in a second. Let's go back to that um, 
that um, Excel spreadsheet, and I'll show you how to do student t test. All right. So um, we are going to try and compare two different temperatures and see if there's a difference, statistically significant difference. Now you can see here on the board, I've written there's a null hypothesis. This states that there's. I'll show you on one note as well, actually. Um, here, the null hypothesis that there is no statistically significant difference between the two data sets, for example, the two, or two temperatures that I said we're going to compare. Now, you'll reject this null hypothesis if your p-value is smaller than 0 0.05. Now, let's go back here. We are going to try and compare two um, data sets. Let's try and compare, um, let's look at one that's very different. Let's try temp at 20 and 23. Let's do 0 and 23, all right? Because that, that we expect a small p-value. Let's see what happens. Who knows? I'll, actually lose, I'll do 0 and 20 because that's a big difference there, all right? So you want to go to um, data on your Excel. And on the very right, there'll be data analysis. All right, you click on that. And then this thing comes up. You want to go down and click on t-test, two sample assuming, uh, assuming equal variance. Hit OK. Variable range one, we said we're going to do zero degrees and 20 degrees. So variable range one is zero degrees. And then I just select the data for the 20 degrees. And then hit OK. It'll open in another sheet and give you this stuff here. Now. You can put this in your appendix, all right? The, what you want really for the two tail, that means two, di two different sets, you need only that value. So I'll just highlight that really quickly. You see it's 0 0.23. Now, because, so you got 0 0.23. So what you really want to say, let's say you got, um, you got 0.23. All right, so you got P equals 0 0.23 between, you know, if you're comparing between zero degrees Celsius and I think it was 23, was it? 23 degrees Celsius. So because P is larger than 0 0.05, we do not reject. Let me just finish this last thing. So because P is greater than 0 0.05, we do not reject this null hypothesis. So we are not going to reject this. This thing stays. That means there is no statistically significant difference between the data you collected at 0 degrees and the data you collected there at 23 degrees. So if we look at the graph um, between 0 degrees, so that one there, and 23 degrees, there is no statistically significant difference. And you can even see the error bars are overlapping. So you're basically, you, you've shown, using two different statistics, you've shown that this stuff is not accurate. Does that help? Yeah. I think that's about it. And watch these videos. That helps. I think that's about it.